Welcome to the final of five series, Building Resilience in Uncertain Times. So we've learned over the last four weeks what resilience is. <clears throat> it's the ability to <coughs> excuse me, recover readily from illness or depression, adversity. It's about being buoyant and being balanced. We've talked about yoga and Ayurveda. And in those practices, resilience is often referred to as riding the wave, kind of going with the flow, the ups and downs of life, particularly when we're not in control of things that are changing around us, much like the environment that we're in these days. Ayurveda resilience is about building a very strong immune system. In Ayurveda, health isn't just the absence of disease, Health is rather the, your most natural state, which is balanced and vibrant, full of energy. And it's from a place like this, from well-being, that the immune system can thrive, keep us healthy. Over the course of the last four sessions, we've explored ways to incorporate basic Ayurvedic principles into our daily lives based on how we're feeling. We learned about the organizing energies of the doshas, vata, kapha, and pitta. And if you'd like to learn more about those or review those things, episodes one, two, and three of this series talks about each of them individually, ways to identify what might be out of balance and how to bring those energies back into balance. And I introduced the fundamental two of the fundamental healing laws of Ayurveda. Like attracts like, and opposites bring balance. So how do you get yourself back into balance? Doing the opposite of what you're currently doing. <clears throat> so for instance, if you're feeling cold, eat or drink warm foods. Take a warm shower or a warm bath. Or go for a vigorous walk or do some vigorous exercise that will warm up your body. Do the opposite. What will bring the opposite? If you're feeling lethargic or stuck, you might eat light foods in small amounts, so you're not feeling so heavy. You might practice the energizing breath of gastrica, that bellows breath that we talked about in episode two. And most importantly, resist the urge to not move. So try to get yourself moving, because the more we don't move, the more we won't move. So opposites bring balance. Get out there and move. If you're feeling hot physically, eat lighter foods. Eat cooling foods, apples, uh, cucumbers, grapes, lettuce, things that are cooling. Practice that cooling breath of shatali or sitkari where you curl your tongue and breathe in and out. It's kind of sometimes people call it the peppermint patty breath because it's a very cooling effect. And I taught you how to do that in episode three. If you're feeling physically hot, wear light, breathable clothing. If you're agitated or angry, um, get out into nature or practice that meta meditation that we learned in episode three when we were talking about pitta energy. If you're worried or anxious or not sleeping well, you might take a warm bath before you go to bed. Shut off the news <laughs> at least an hour before you go to bed. Maybe for the entire day. It seems to repeat itself. It's gone on a groundhog day. Same thing every day. Not that good right now. Or practice that naughty showdown, that alternate nostril breathing. We'll be practicing that uh, today. As a reminder, we also learned how to do it in episode one. But it's a calming, soothing way to breathe and quiet the mind before you settle down for sleep. So simple principles that help us move ourselves towards being more balanced. And balance is resilience. And resilience helps build the immune system. <clears throat> Today we're going to introduce the idea of self-care. The practice of being kind to yourself. Partly about knowing when your resources are running low and you need to fill up, need to replenish. 
There's so many benefits to taking care of yourself, of, of practicing self-care. One is improved resistance to disease by activating the parasympathetic nervous system, that calming, relaxing part of the autonomic nervous system that settles us down, slows the heart rate, quiets the nervous system. Better physical health by reducing stress, building a stronger immune system. So self-care does all of those things for us. Our practice today will focus on reducing stress in the body by activating that parasympathetic nervous system and balancing both hemispheres of the brain, getting them to work together, <coughs> to cooperate. So the self-care practices that I believe are essential during this new and unsettling times we live in in COVID, these times when we're really not in control of what's going on around us, um, and trying to find some balance and some ease the anxiety that we, that we are living with. So we'll practice a, a slow, deep belly breath for our breathing, as well as a little bit of Nadi Shodan. So to begin the practice, we'll settle in, find your seat. So in your chair, let your sitting bones get heavy. Let the sternum and the crown of the head get light. Roll the shoulders up and back and settle them down away from the ears. And rest the palms down on your, on your lap today. Close your eyes if you're comfortable with that or let your gaze be soft down towards your lap. And just begin to breathe with awareness, allowing the mind's eye to follow the breath. <coughs> Excuse me, my allergies are, are kicking in today. <clears throat> so I have my little froggy follows me around in the fall, especially. So settle into your breath. Just let the breath be smooth. So if it isn't smooth, if it feels a little ragged, See if over the course of several breaths that you can allow it to smooth out. Soften the belly. Relax the muscles in the belly and allow the breath to move into that region of the body, into the lower belly. And as it fills the low belly, allow it to fill up into the low ribs and then up into the chest. And as we practice this form of breathing, this deep belly breathing, what happens is we're bringing the breath deep into the lowest lobes of the lungs. And it's in that place that the parasympathetic nervous system is activated. By turning on the switch, or actually turning off the switch of that anxiety and letting everything settle. Allowing that release of tension and stress. So each exhale perhaps brings a little more of a letting go. So I'll allow you in your own time to practice five more rounds of this breath. So your breath might Take a little longer than mine, might take a little less time than mine. It's okay, wherever you are, you are. And when you finished your fifth round, just let go of the technique and just notice how you feel. <coughs> <coughs> And then, as you feel ready, just flutter your eyes open. And we'll move into that alternate nostril movement, that Nadi Shodan, that calming breath, that balancing of the hemispheres of the brain, balancing the energies in the body. So take your thumb, rest it on your right nostril, and your ring finger and your pinky resting on your left. You can take your pointer and your middle finger, rest them on the um, the meat, the flesh, the base of your thumb, or you can let them rest on your forehead. 
I'm going to rest them on my thumb so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to close up my right nostril with my right thumb, inhale through my left. Close off my left, release the right, breathe out through the right. Inhale through the right, close the right, open the left and exhale. Inhale left, close the left, exhale right. Inhale right. Close the right, exhale left. So I think you get the picture. Alternate nostril. So I'm going to let you practice this in your own pace for about 60 seconds. So I'll keep track of the time. You just notice your breath. Allowing the breath in through one nostril, out through the other. Into that same nostril, out through the opposite. Moving from side to side. Keeping in mind those nice full belly breaths. So let the breaths be full and relaxed and smooth. You might little allow just a little short hold on the inhale when you're full. Maybe a count of two or three. And the next time you uh, exhale through your left nostril, just release the technique and allow yourself a moment to feel the imprint of that breathing technique on the mind, on the physical body. So it's about pausing and observing. We talked last week about Sadhya, the practice of knowing yourself, of observing without judgment. So it's just a matter of checking in. The more we check in with ourselves, the more we can practice the self-care practices that are going to make us feel better. Practicing ahimsa, non-harming, all of those activities that bring more positive influences into our lives than negative. So our practice today will be very slow, very rhythmic. So we're not in a hurry today. Hope you're not. And hopefully at the end of the practice, you'll feel a nice sense of groundedness, a nice sense of connection to the earth, a sense of stability. And at the same time, a sense of lightness and energy in the body. So this wonderful complementing energies, hopefully it will be activated through this practice. But the practice is slow and mindful. So sit nice and tall. Once again, finding your seat, rooting the sitting bones down, lightening the sternum and the crown of the head up. Roll the shoulders up and back and relax the arms down by your sides. So we're going to do several sun breaths with both arms here, going as slow as you possibly can, turning the palms out, inhaling the arms up overhead. Pressing the palms together, and then turning the palms out and letting the arms float down. But practicing that deep, full breath. Moving with the pace of the breath. So maybe you're moving a little more swiftly than I. Sometimes it's hard to slow the breath down, so it takes some practice. Maybe you're moving even more slowly because you're practiced at this slow pace. So wherever you are, you are. And that's fine. We're going to do five. I believe that was the second one. I get to talking so much I lose count, but I'm going to call this three. And down we go. And four. And five. How slow can you go? Maybe 
pausing for the count of two or three at the top of this one. And then letting it out. So a little challenge for the left and right side of the brain. We're going to do the same movement. We're going to move a little differently on one side than the other. So as we bring our palms to turn outward, our left arm will stop halfway. The right arm will go all the way up. And then we'll bring everything down, turn the palms down, float the arms down. And then we'll move to the other side. So the palms will turn out, the arms will float, the right arm will stop, the left arm will continue. Palms will turn, and the arms will come back down. Moving from side to side, this time the left arm will pause, the right arm will continue. Turning the palms and bringing it down. Turning the palms out and up. And turning them down. That's the last one of these. So now we're going to do both again just to kind of balance ourselves out. We inhale both arms up. And exhale down. And inhaling out and up. And bringing it back down. Last one. There we go. The palms turn out. Floating them up, press the palms together, maybe hold full here, pressing the palms together, relaxing the shoulders, gazing up. And exhaling, bringing it down. Nice. Hands on the lap, just let the head float from side to side. Just beginning to wake up the cervical spine, moving with your breath as always. I always call it a little dance to the music of your breath. Your breath is the music that the body moves to. So if you want to match it up, make it really a nice little dance. Bringing your head back to neutral. Just floating your arms halfway up, kind of letting your wrist just kind of hang. Slowly, just a little <clears throat> floppy circles. Kind of getting into the wrists, wrists, and then reversing direction. You might need to sit a little further back here on your chair because we're going to lift our legs, do the same floppy little circles. We're going to add the ankles. Nice crackly. Little ankle circles, little floppy, slow. And then bring everything down. So the feet are on the ground or on some solid surface. If you can't reach the ground, maybe blocks underneath your feet. We're going to inhale the left knee up into our chest and exhale it down. Moving to the other side, we're going to inhale the right knee up into our chest. And lower it. Just moving from side to side here. One more on each side. Okay. We're going to do some cat and cows. So sitting in the seat, hands on your thighs. Bend in the elbows as you lean the heart forward, lift the gaze, draw the shoulders back. Nice little arch and the low back. Exhale, cat. And we're just going to move back and forth in this cat and cow. And then from here, we're going to come into cow pose, lifting the heart. On the exhale, we're going to just lean forward, glide the hands all the way down to the ankles, fold back down. Inhale the hands to the thighs, press yourself up. Find that cat, arch the back. And then bring yourself all the way down on the exhale into a forward fold. Inhale the hands back to the thighs, lift the heart, the chest, the gaze. And exhale, fold. Breathe. 
Bring it back up, last round, coming into cow pose. And then rounding forward all the way down. Inhale, hands to the thighs, press yourself up. Roll your shoulders a couple of times. <clears throat> Bobble the head. Pause and notice. You might feel some warmth, a little bit of energy beginning to circulate in the upper body. <clears throat> Great. We'll do three rounds of simple sun salutations in the chair before we get up to move. Arms down by your side. We've done these every single time. So you will maybe remember, inhale the arms up and exhale to cactus. Inhale, lean and exhale, fold all the way forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine, lift and reach the heart forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out to the sides and up all the way overhead. Now you might need to bring your hands to your thighs to bring yourself up. That's okay. So do what feels right, remembering that Getting in touch with what you need is what's important, and doing it. Leaning and gliding all the way down. Lifting to lengthen, exhaling to fold. Inhaling your choice as to how you come up with the help of your legs and hands or using your core. Exhale, hands to heart center and back by your sides. Last time, inhale up and exhale to cactus. Inhale, lean. And exhale, fold all the way down. Inhale to lengthen, find that long spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse it, bring it all the way up. And exhale the hands to the heart. Beautiful. So opening your eyes. We're going to find our way to standing. So we're simply going to stand today. I know that in most of my classes we do those stand up, sit downs. Today, because of time restraints, we're not going to do those, but I encourage you to do a few of those stand up, sit downs in the chair. About 20 of them every single day. And if you don't know how, just watch the previous episodes. You will find out. Really good for your legs. So we're going to do some simple breathing techniques. We're going to bring that sense of self-care to ourselves by bringing our hands to our heart. So first, find mountain pose. Knees, <coughs> hips, and, and uh, knees, hips, and ankles, those body parts that I'm pointing to, all in line. Shoulders over the hips, roll the shoulders up and back, relax the arms down. Let the tailbone get heavy. Heads down between the heels as the sternum and the crown of the head feel light, just as we did in the chair. We'll do some sun breaths, inhaling the hands to our heart. Exhaling, press the hands into the heart. Just feel that beautiful warmth. Inhale, the arms up overhead. And exhale, the arms back down. Inhale, the hands to the heart. Exhale, press into the heart. Inhale, glide the hands up. Exhale, the, hand, the arms down. Last round, inhale, hands to the heart. Exhale, press into the heart. Inhale, glide the hands up overhead. And if your shoulders are tight, you might want to bring your hands apart. We're going to hold for two. Really stretch through the belly, exhale back down by your sides. Beautiful job. So now we're going to add a little heel lift. So as we bring the arms up, we're going to bring the weight into the front of the foot, lift the heels. We're going to pause at the top for the count of two before we come back down. So we'll just go inhale, the arms up overhead, weight comes to the forward part of the foot, heels lift. And then exhale, lower. Inhale, up, weight forward, heels lift, hold it for two, and down. Inhaling, weight forward, heels up, count it for two, and down. 
This last one we're going to hold up for the count of three to five, whatever you can hold. So heels up. Ankles might wobble, that's okay. Come into three or five in your own time, in your own count. And then bringing it back down. Just pause and notice once you get there. Feel the feet rooting down into the earth. Feel the energy moving in the body. So we're going to move into a warrior one pose. So we're going to start out with the left foot forward and the right foot back. We're going to do very similar kinds of work with our hands as we did um, bringing our hands to our heart in this movement. So we're going to begin with our, hand, uh, our legs straight, our arms down by our sides. Inhale the hands to the heart as you bend into the front leg. Exhale, press the hands into the chest. Inhale the arms up overhead and exhale, bring it down. Inhale the hands to the heart and the front leg. Exhale, press those hands into the heart, feel the warmth. Inhale the arms up and exhale, everything back. Straighten the legs, lower the arms. Inhale the hands to the chest over the heart. Exhale, press towards the heart. Inhale, arms float up. And exhale. Last one on this side. Bringing the hands to the heart as we bend the front leg. Pressing the chest. Inhaling up. And exhaling to lower. Great. We're going to move to the other side. Step the right foot forward. And then step the left foot back. Both legs are straight, arms are down by your side. Same sequence, other side. Inhale, hands to the heart. Exhale into the chest. Inhale, the arms rise. And exhale back to start. Inhale, hands to the chest. Bending into the front leg. Exhale, pressing into the heart. Inhale, up. And exhale, lower. Two more, inhale, and press on the exhale. Inhale up, and exhale lower. Last one, inhale, and press to exhale. Inhale up, and exhale lower. Great job. Stepping the feet together, moving away from your chair. If you happen to be near it, we're going to do some forward folds. So make sure you're not going to bump your head on the, on the chair. <coughs> I've done it. This is a padded chair. My ones at home aren't padded. And they do make a bonking sound. So don't bonk yourself here. So stand back. Bring your hands onto your hips. Take a nice breath in and lift the chest. Exhale. We're going to bend the knees. Glide the hands down. Take a forward fold all the way down. On an inhale, we're going to lengthen the spine, lead with the chest as we come up, bring the hands to the thighs all the way up, and hands to the waist. Take a nice breath in, and exhale, fold, glide the hands down all the way, bend the knees generously as you fold. When you're there, if you want to explore straightening the legs, your choice, but just be mindful of your back, hold the navel in. And to come up on that inhale, lengthen the spine, lead with the heart, come all the way up, roll the shoulders up and back and down. Hands to the waist. Take a breath in. Exhale, fold. Inhale to lengthen the spine, lead with the heart all the way up. Roll the shoulders up and back, hands to the waist. So we're going to do a warrior one flow here. So we'll start with um, feet apart once again, legs straight, hands on the waist. So what we're going to do is take our uh, left hand 
and our left foot is forward, left hand on the left waist, and our right hand is hanging down. So we're going to uh, take an inhale, bend into that front leg as we move the right arm forward. So seeing how the hand and the knee are connected energetically. See how they move together, so we're going to bring that right arm up, and then bring it down. And bring it up. And down. So trying to imagine that imaginary string between the hand that's moving, the knee that's moving. Keeping weight evenly distributed on both feet. So don't let all the weight come into that front foot when you bend into that front leg. And then finding a warrior leg. So keeping that bent leg in front. We're going to do a little bit of weight shifting here. So we're going to lift that right leg and then bring it back and lift it and bring it back and lift it and bring it back and lift it and bring it back. This last one we're going to lift, and maybe we hold. And then bring the legs down. Great job. Moving to the other side. Our right leg will be forward, our left leg will be back, both legs will be straight to start. So take your right hand on the right hip, and we're going to make that movement as if there's a connection between that left hand and that right knee. So here we go, moving up and back down. So even though the front knee bends, the weight stays equally distributed in both feet. Just letting your mind's eye see that connection of movement of energy left and right sides. Working with those left and right hemispheres of the brain here. Inhaling to bend and raise the arm, and exhaling to lower and straighten. And one more. Jab. So now we're going to do this leg lift on the other side. So we'll lift and lower, lift and lower. Might not have to step back super far. It is a balance. Inhaling to lift, exhaling to lower. Inhaling to lift, exhaling to lower. Inhaling to lift, exhaling to lower, and then we will hold, perhaps. Maybe we bring both arms up. Finding that Christy, that focus. And then lowering, lowering the arms, closing the eyes, pausing to notice and feel. We've been working different sides of the brain. We've been working to balance both hemispheres. Working opposite sides of the body together. Just notice what you're feeling. Where the energy is, where it's moving in the body. And then open your eyes. And we'll move to a wide-legged stance on the mat. So we're going to have a, a wide leg, <clears throat> arms down by our sides. On an inhale, we're going to lift the left arm up and over. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale back. Exhale the arm down. Inhale the right arm up. And exhale over. Inhale back up. And exhale the arm down. You get it. Inhale up. And exhale over, getting a nice stretch through the side body, through the hip, through the ribs as we take that lean. But knowing when enough is enough. So finding in your own body where the roadblocks come, honoring them, right? You don't want to force or explore. Little fanyaya, little understanding of our own bodies, so that we can practice ahimsa, that we can do things non-harming to bring balance back into the body. Balance is resilience. It's a buoyancy, it's the ability to bounce back. One more on each side. So now turn your right toes out. We're going to come into a warrior two stance. So in that, the heel of the right foot intercepts the arch of the back. And you might notice if your right hip kind of drops down here. See if you can lift it up, level your pelvis, bring the arms out to the sides, and relax the shoulders. We're going to look out over the right fingertips. <clears throat> so if your shoulders are not loving this right now, if this really isn't for you, you can bring your hands to your hips. We're going to pause here for a moment, just kind of check things out. Where can you soften? See if you can bring the energy moving down from the waist through the legs. On the inhale, just feel the upper body lift. So exhaling the energy down through the legs, through the waist. Inhaling the energy up through the torso, lifting the lower ribs off the waist on the inhale. So there's this lift. And this lower. And this lift. And this settling. And a lift. And a settle. Settling in here. Inhale, flip the right arm, the right hand up. Take the left hand down the back leg. Bring the right arm up towards the ceiling. So we're not doing a back bend here. We're simply reaching up towards the ceiling with our fingertips, finding that length from the hip through the rib cage. Maybe you let your gaze go up to the top hand if you're able to do that. If that's uh, not in your wheelhouse today, maybe you look down, maybe you look straight ahead, whatever gives you a sense of balance. And then bring it back to that warrior two. We're going to come back into that reverse warrior. We're going to take that left arm down, right arm up. And if this doesn't work for you today, again, if your shoulder's bothering you, your neck's bothering you, take your right hand, just kind of cradle the back of your head. Let the back of your neck be long, and let your elbow point up towards the ceiling or as close to that angle as you can get it. So there's a nice sense of holding here of the skull. Nice support for the neck. <clears throat> and then inhale yourself back to warrior two. Straighten that front leg, turn the toes forward, and then we're going to move to the other side. As always, one side needs to balance the other side. So we have to do the same thing. We want to level the pelvis, bend into that left knee this time. Turn the tailbone down, pubic bone up so you're leveling as if the pelvis is a saucer. It's holding a little bit of water. You don't want it to tilt in any direction. You want it to be flat. Bring yourself back to this warrior two pose, gazing over the left fingertips this time. Breathing in that, um, that way that we did on the other side. So as we <coughs> excuse me, breathe in, the upper body or lifts as if it's filling with air like a balloon. Exhaling, everything settles. So the feet ground, legs ground. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. 
and exhale. We're going to move into warrior, a reverse warrior, flipping that front hand, letting the right arm settle, relax down to the right leg. So here again, check in with yourself. You can bring that arm all the way up to the ceiling, or you can cradle your head. Pointing the elbow up as best you can. Maybe it doesn't get to the vertical, that's okay. Wherever it is, it is. Keep breathing and opening up the ribs. Coming back to warrior two. Breathing in and lifting. Exhaling soft. Bringing the energy up. And exhaling, grounding the energy down. Last reverse warrior. In the uh, technique of choice, either holding your head or not, gazing up or straight ahead or whatever brings you balance. Bringing yourself back to warrior two. Straightening the front leg, turning the toes forward, nice. and stepping the feet together. We're going to do one last piece of uh, movement with breath that will help us with focus. So focus is um, access through the third eye, the drishti, finding a focal point. Our drishti is that third eye in this movement, that space right between your, your fore, forehead or for your your eyebrows. So close your eyes and just kind of bring your awareness inward and upward towards that space. So we're going to keep that focus in mind. You can do the practice with your eyes open, but you want to bring your awareness to that third eye. So we're going to inhale the arms up overhead, press the palms together, exhale, thumbs to the third eye. Awareness goes there. Inhale the arms up overhead. On the exhale, we're going to glide the left arm down the right arm as it reaches out. Settle in, a little bend in the knees, let the weight kind of drop down. Close your eyes, bring your gaze to that drishti, that third eye. As you inhale, glide the left hand up the arm, straighten the legs. You might want to separate your feet a little bit, turn your toes out, exhale. The right arm down the left arm, pausing the right hand on the left shoulder, finding that drishti, inhaling back up, and exhale the last piece of this, bringing the hands behind you. So either palms together, fingers down, or palms together, fingers up, open up the chest, settle down as you exhale, a little weight comes into the lower body. And the focus is on the third eye. Inhale, straighten the legs and bring the arms to rest. So we'll do that one more time. So the feet are wide. We call this horse stance. A little bend in the knees. Inhale, we straighten the knees as the arms float up. Press the palms together. Exhale, thumbs to third eye. Sink just a little bit into this horse stance. Gaze. Is right at that third eye, right where the thumbs are pressing. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, left hand glides down, right arm sinking as you open up that right arm. Left hand rests on the right shoulder. Inhale, glide up that right arm. Exhale, glide down the left with the right hand pauses on the left shoulder as the knees bend, the weight sinks. Inhale, glide back up. And exhaling, hands behind you. Pressing the fingers down or up, rolling the shoulders back. Inhaling to straighten the legs, exhaling to sink. Bringing your awareness to that third eye. Inhaling, straighten the legs and bring the arms down by your sides. Bring your feet parallel. Let your arms rest by your side, or you can even rest your hands at your heart or on your third eye. Just pause and notice and feel. That sense of groundedness, 
of being connected to earth at the same time feeling that energy, that lightness. And then we'll find our way back to the chair. So we're going to do a very brief um, sitting in quiet, or shavasana, to kind of let the energy settle. So if you want to be really relaxed, you can kind of lay back and kind of hang out in your chair, close your eyes. I'm just bring awareness to shifts or changes in mind, body, energy. Temperature. And don't worry if you don't feel any, anything different. It's okay. Yoga is a practice. You know, it takes a while to connect to how you're feeling, to connect to how yoga shifts and changes those feelings. So no judgment ever. It's just an observation without judgment highest form of compassion. We're going to end the practice with the meditation. So when you're ready to move out of this self-observation, just kind of flutter your eyes open. And if you're settled into that relaxed state, see if you can find yourself more into a, a meditative position. So. Well, that could be sitting on a cushion on the floor, it could be sitting in your chair, but sit tall. You don't want to slouch in meditation. We're going to do a little bit of um, body awareness. I'll walk you through um, an exploration of different parts of the body, and then we'll move into the mantra meditation of in and out with the breath. Mantra meditations are very... Um, powerful in bringing a sense of stability to the body, to the mind. So closing your eyes if you're comfortable with that or letting the gaze be soft towards the lap or the floor. Hands can rest palms up on your lap. And just allow the breath to be smooth and steady. And as I mentioned, a body part, just bring your awareness there without any particular expectation, just, just notice what might be there, what might be present. Some vibration, sense of aliveness. Beginning with the feet and the toes. Ankles. And calves. The back of the knee and the kneecap. The backs of the thighs. The tops of the thighs. The buttocks. The hips. The pelvic floor. The low back and belly. The abdomen. The mid and upper back. The diaphragm. The heart and the lungs. shoulders, sensing down through the upper arms to the elbows, through the forearms and the wrists, the backs of the hands and the palms, and the thumbs and the fingers.
the back of the neck and the throat, the jaw and the tongue. eyes and temples and forehead. The back of the head. The scalp. The crown of the head. Resting in a sense of embodied presence, this connection of mind to body. You might rest right here in this sense of presence, or if you find your mind scampering off like a little puppy, dragging you somewhere else, you might find it useful to layer on the, the mantra of in on the in breath and out on the out breath. And each time you realize your mind has drifted away, very gently bring it back to that mantra. Bringing it back with a great deal of compassion. No chastising, just going, uh -huh. up. Just the recognition that the mind has wandered off. Just that recognition is a breakthrough in the practice of meditation. Encouraging it back to the mantra of in and out. Letting go of the mantra. Coming back to the natural breath of the body, maybe finding some gentle movement, gentle drifting of the head, maybe a rolling of the shoulders. Before you open your eyes, keeping your eyes closed, just some gentle movement, a wiggling of toes and fingers. Whatever brings this sense of wakefulness back to the body, <clears throat> sense of presence. And then slowly open your eyes. So this practice of, of self-care, of, of being gentle with yourself during a yoga practice to help ground you, uh, feel safe and secure and grounded and a sense of energy to help you Feel enlightened, feeling focused, feeling balanced. So I hope you found this series helpful. I hope you'll review whatever part of the series uh, has done the most for you, has made the biggest significant change in your physical and mental well-being. So I hope you'll revisit the programs that um, helped you the most. To end this practice, to end this series, just bring your hands to your heart. We bring our hands to our hearts, reminding us to fill our hearts with kindness and compassion. And to our lips, reminding us to speak words of kindness and compassion. Bringing our hands to our third eye, reminding us to expand our thoughts of kindness and compassion towards ourselves as well as others. And in honor of the light that shines in each one of us, the light that unites us all, we bow and say namaste.
Thank you for coming.